Oh, good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Oh, come on, you're dealing with a bunch of people from Massachusetts and New England up here. Come on. Uh, well, welcome. Welcome to a, a Wicked Smart Summit. We're excited to be here. This is going to be an awesome event. What a, what a timely event it is. I saw a bunch of people when their hands went up when they talked about the economy or they were just pressured into getting here because their friends told them to come here. Uh, but Chris will go over some, some really good uh, metrics here to share with you that you are in the right place at the right time. Um, but before we do that, I, I want to go over, because... We didn't have positive focus, actually. Oh, yeah. Dan. Dan, you messed up positive focus. Well, if you've never been to one of our events before, uh, we always start the event with positive focus. <laughs> and a positive focus is literally just what's... Like, just tell us something positive. 30 seconds or less. Just something positive. So we'll get used to using the mics. Can we get two people just to go to the mics and tell us something positive? The idea here is leave any crap that might have happened this morning or mayhem. Right? Just, it's done. Positive. Yeah, we heard that. Flights got canceled and, you know, a bunch of things happened. So we have to leave those. Leave it there. Murray, why don't you get us started? Cup, cup on each side. Uh, if someone can go first, Steve been here many times he knows what a positive focus is and then you'll get the idea it's simple it's not a, it's not a, a paragraph long it's a simple positive focus yep all right can't I see, see you with that light but i can hear you 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 can the mic's working okay yeah i have a lot of people i've never met before and i like to talk and hang out with people so that <laughs> means i'm excited about all the new relationships uh we're gonna have by the end of this week and uh i'm excited Thank you, Steve. That is an absolute understatement. If you guys don't know Steve, he goes by the Rambler. By the way, he said he wants to talk to people. You've got high six and chairmans in these three tables here. You guys probably want to pick their brain on break. Just a thought. I am very excited that I can probably say that I've done nine real estate deals before 18 years old. And I'm extremely grateful that Zach over here has given me the chance to uh, intern with him and uh, escalate that even further to do a lot more things with all you great people. So, yeah. Right. Right. You gotta, Brian, you're gonna have to connect. Where's Eliza? Did you, Elijah, Elijah, you raise your hand. You're gonna want to connect with him. Elijah's done some great deals and he just turned 18 as well. Love it. Who's up next? If any of you have been on the mastermind call, you'll know that I'm the one that's battling with Steve for the. the <laughs> the talk time so <laughs> if he's unavailable or his ears are bleeding come see me i'm i've been here this is my sixth year and i'm more excited than ever so i'm excited to see awesome what we link. Do. yeah good job link said some awesome things too you guys are going to want to stick around uh some record breaking things as well so i want to go over with you guys a little bit about our core values purpose and mission we, we got Dan was starting to present some of that ideas to you as well. So this is really the rules of our community. This is what Wicked Smart is all about. So if you resonate with what I'm going to talk about here today, then you are in the right place at the right time. So when I look at the core values, and I encourage you to go ahead and read those, those core values are how we see the world and how our community is consistently interacting. So if things like we constantly innovate and improve, or we complete all transactions with the highest integrity, we match effort for effort, we're clear, blunt, and to the point, no gray area, and team over me, if those are things that resonate with you and you believe that you can live by those values, then you're in the right place. This is a great fit for you. That's exactly how we interact on a day-to-day -day basis and how we believe we're going to get to the amount of deals we want to get done, and, then, and to help you guys build businesses. Hey, when Zach. You, go ahead. So important to know, as we, as we just hit the, the community a little bit already, when Zach talks about values, this is how we not only hire and fire and build our team, that's how we accept associates, too, because the Wicked Smart community, we're super protective of it. This is so, when he says we live by this, inside and outside the company, we live by those. Yeah, that's a great point. The, it's the rules of the community, per se. So the, this is our purpose. I mean, each and every one of you are here today because the way in which we make decisions are through this purpose. 
which is to empower individuals and families to create the life of their dreams. And we believe we can do that by helping each of you start with your first creative financing real estate transaction. So getting you to there first is our first and foremost mission. That's why when Dan says that we get heated and frustrated in our offsites about how to get you to one more deal, because we believe that's how we're going to empower you in order to get you to the finish line here. To, I saw many of you have dream deals inside your, your W-2 jobs or have gone through some ups and downs. That's how we're going to consistently empower you. And really, our vision and our mission is to become known as the community that transforms dedicated people. How many of you believe you're a dedicated person? Raise a hand. To transform dedicated people into wicked smart real estate investors. Because Chris and I will talk about this throughout the course of the next couple of days, and that is you have to be dedicated in order to become a real estate investor. The dedication to this craft is going to make the difference between you seeing success and you not seeing success. Now success, you'll write that. Success will be different for each and every one of you. But the only way you get there is to be absolutely dedicated, and Dan used the word committed, to this process. And no matter how long it takes, you're willing to do it. See, I was asked recently on a podcast, they said, hey, Zach, how did you go from being a bartender eight years ago to a CEO of a company and a partner in multiple other companies? And that question really took me for pause. I, I, I mean, it sounds like a simple answer, right? Oh, I worked really hard. So I started like this, this, this searching process where I was like, how did that happen? Because there's plenty of other times in life where I set out a goal that didn't, that didn't happen. I'm sure if anybody set a goal before and that you you never accomplished it, okay, either you you're not setting goals, which we're gonna talk about here today, or you're lying. <laughs> and what really happened was I I started diving into a couple of these books. So has anybody ever read the book The Next Five Moves? Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Bet David. If you did it, I should see everybody writing it down right now. Uh, secondly. The second book that really started to, to help me focus on this as well, and that was Green Lights. Anybody read Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey? Now, if you don't like Matthew McConaughey as an actor, that's okay. But trust me, I like this guy way more now than I read his book. And really what I came to discover was that there was a simple formula in order to get yourself to accomplish the vision in which you want to accomplish. And I gave you guys a background of what our mission purpose values are, or our vision purpose values are, because it's very coordinated from a business and a personal standpoint. See, your vision is who you want to become. You can write that down. Who do I want to become? Because that is where your North Star is going to be. So the vision is who you want to become. So if the vision is who you want to become, then these three things have to be in alignment in order to create fulfillment. Most people that get involved in real estate investing want to get involved in real estate investing because they're looking for more fulfillment in life. Usually that comes with an alignment of your vision. Has anybody ever gone through those types of uh, struggles in life where it's like you just feel like you're just hitting your head against the wall constantly, hitting your head against the wall, and you're like, why aren't I reaching this end goal? But then all of a sudden you let go and you end up into a very easy transition, and all of a sudden you just start reaching your goals very easily and swiftly? Because eventually your alignment with your fulfillment, and then things come much more easier. So if we're able to create alignment, what does that actually mean? So we need to first and foremost have a lens to look through or values. Like if your value here today is to say, I want to be a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, or I just want to make enough money where I could be at all of my kids' practices, games, school events, and it's going to take me 100 k to get there, then that's amazing. That's a good thing to look at. But you can't compare yourself to somebody that wants to build a million-dollar business. Because you're never going to be in alignment with reaching that end goal. So 
So once you have the right values or the or the the, the rules and the skill set to work through, then the behaviors need to come into play. And we're going to teach you the behaviors over the next two days or three days with VIP day on what behaviors you should be doing day in and day out in order to reach your goals. And lastly, then it becomes an effort game. Effort, energy, a sustained amount of energy towards one object. See, when I first got involved in real estate investing, I was trying to escape my uh, bartending gig. And when I started, I was like, I need to get a deal done in the next 90 days so that I can go ahead and quit. Does that sound familiar with some people here? Once I get my first deal, then I get proof of concept. Now, all of a sudden, I will commit fully. But the, but the challenge with that was that I severely underestimated the amount of it's effort nice. that I needed to put into place in order to actually make that happen. Brutal. That tends to be the challenge with a lot of these things. So what happened was then as I was working through this business, I did not get my first deal in the first 90 days, which if anybody knows my background story, it almost took me six months. And I had awesome people like Chris and Nick in my office helping me close deals. So what I needed to do is two things. I either needed to lower my vision in order to match my efforts, or I either needed to raise my efforts in order to match my business. Because what happens is mismanaged expectations leads to frustration. So once we're able to utilize a formula just like this in order to make sure that your vision is aligned with your values, behaviors, and your effort, that's when fulfillment really comes in play. That's when you don't have to keep asking yourself, when am I going to get my first deal? When am I, when's everything going to start clicking? It clicks when you're in alignment. And then you start being able to reach that fulfillment. Chris? Thank you, sir. Um, Zach talked about dedication, among other things. I just want to recognize a few things here in the room. Every year, you see how many seats we have set up here, right? How many tables and chairs we have set up, right? We pretty much know the numbers, who's going to show up. But here's the interesting stat. We talk about dedication. Dan talked about commitment. Out of 270 people that said, yeah, I want to go yeah. to the event, we knew X amount not only wouldn't show, but wouldn't even confirm. So then there's a percentage of those that confirmed. And out of those that confirmed, 83% of you showed up. So every stand up, give yourself a round of applause for committing and dedicating to show up here. I'm going to send Brian to the back because we couldn't see anybody else standing <laughs> yeah. up and clapping. By the way, I, I'm going to mention this throughout the, the two or three days here. I hope you guys are hanging with us for three. Uh, what I call one-minute decisions. All those people that didn't come made a simple one-minute decision. Simple one-minute decision that probably, not probably, it will affect them for yeah. the rest of their life in a, in, in a not-so-great way. Because this is one of, I, I think I may have said this at one of the last events, but I will tell you that this is one of the best-timed event in economically that we've had to date for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, one is there's statistically more wealth than millionaires that will be created in these markets. Would you guys agree with that? In a, in a changing market, in a chaotic market, in an undecisive market, then good times. Who's going to be Absolutely. one? Yeah. You know, I know it's still early for you guys on the West Coast, but you decided to come here. It's 9 o'clock. Let's get rolling. There's, there's already very little competition, you guys understand that, in our space. And now with this economy, thank the media, they're chasing a bunch of the investors away. And that is just awesome for you. What it means is there's a whole bunch more deals and fewer people that you, that you have to compete with. Secondly, um, who knows what the interest rate is right now? Um, you, you don't have to go to the mic for this. Just yell out. Who knows what the interest rate is right now? Six and a half. Zach thought this morning somewhere in the sevens. I went up by another quarter point. I heard it was 7.6 something. Okay, it's up there, right? It's over six. Fact is, we're buying homes right now, this week, at two and a quarter. 2.75. Brian just got a deal. You'll hear about that tomorrow. Two something. Uh, working on a deal with Morris. Where are you, Morris? 2.25. We have a PS out right now. Kyle? Kyle and I are working on a deal with Anna. If that ever comes through, that's Link in the 0% for two years yeah. and 3.5% interest rate. Guys, this is normal. 
and I'm, I'm on podcasts and they go, whoa, whoa, back up, say that again, and they're in real estate. They don't get what we do. You guys are in a phenomenal position. I now, heard a step from a guy yesterday at, at our mastermind. Um, these guys don't know, we're part of a, a mastermind. It's called Family Masterminds, invite only. It's probably every single person in our industry that, that you know was in that room. Like almost every single one. Wholesale, fix and flip, creative financing, you name it, business builders, <clears throat> business sellers, all in the room, top tier. And, uh, and it's, uh, I was told it was 30 to 40 billion are being done with seller finance. It's awesome. In the early 90s, one or two percent of the transactions were in this creative space. Oh. Now it's up in the teens, approaching 20s. Fraction closings, way up again. Who was here in September? Raise your hand, nice and high. QLS. Okay, I gave you stats then. The number's gone up by about six percentage points. Since September, fractured closings, if you're not familiar with that word, they're, they're, they're dying at the closing table. Deals are falling apart at the closing table. The Google. The Google will tell you the answer on that one. Um, here's some stats. I love doing this every event because, sadly, they got worse, but not sadly for you in this room. 70% of Americans report they're feeling anxious about their personal finances. At QLS, if you took good notes, it was 66% by the same survey by the same um, uh, company. 58% feel that finances control their life. 50, 58%. I started this one, 30% worry about money all the time. You guys know people like that? Do you think it exists or do you think that's just, do you think it exists? All right, guys, I say this all the time. So this is reaction, this is reactive rather. This is not TV. Zach and I want a little reactive experience I spent here. enough time with you guys on Zoom. Yeah. Um, so I can keep going guys, but the fact is people are beat up right now and the good news is for you, you're in the right place, so you don't have to be part of that step, but here's the other good news, you can help people that are in there, can't you? This niche helps people, you can't do it without being in that mode. So you can help buyers, you can help sellers, and you can help yourself and your family. You don't have to be part of that, those awful stats. That, all this translates to is higher demand for what we're doing because of that. Um, here's an example, during COVID, who was, who was part of the community during COVID? I know these guys up front. Who else? Okay, only a few of you? That's it. Okay. Where is everyone? During COVID, one minute decisions were made. Uh, were they not? In other words, people decided to close their doors. A restaurant thrived at the same time a restaurant went out of business. One minute decisions. Same industry. A very good friend of ours, luckily he survived, but during COVID, made a one minute decision to shut his doors. Oh, I guess we can't do this. We screamed from the rooftops what to do, how to do it, how to pivot, and our deals went through the roof. See, it's all who you hang out with. And so you're in the right room for sure. Over and over and over, I can say that. Here's an interesting thing. I was saying this to Zach last week, and I think Kim and I were talking about it. The stock market in real estate, think about this, are the only two industry segments, niches, stock market and real estate, that when things are on sale, i.e. prices are going down, people run. Do you know anything, like when there's a sale at a store, do people run or they go in and buy because it's on sale? So real estate's on sale, stocks are on sale, and the media is screaming and people are running the other way. What does that spell for you? What does that spell for you guys? Opportunity. Opportunity. Big time opportunity. Here's the issue though, you gotta know how to, um, we don't just click forward, Zach. You gotta know how to do a couple things here. We are in what I call, we have the opportunity to be in, the perfect triangle here where you can be part of this movement that we're in. It's creative real estate, it's not just wicked smart. We just happen to be the foremost experts nationally, in our opinion, in this space. You, in doing that, can affect lives. I could have kept going on the stats guys. they have two pages of it, but it's awful what people, what people get themselves trapped into. You can affect that right now. And in doing that, the rest of the triangle is, some of you have heard me do this back in the COVID days, is to go ahead and help create wealth for you, your family, and for some of them to get them out of that awful awful point so you're you have a chance to do that but to take advantage of it you got to be in it right you got to be in the triangle um, what we have going on is is a perfect storm no question about it that affordability is an issue for the first time in 50 something years for the second or third time in 50 something years interest rates rose in the last 12 months for the the fastest rise in the last 12 months in 51 years one of the fastest in 51 years all this stuff's coming together to say, screaming loudly at us, creative real estate is, is, a, is it couldn't be better. Um, you're going to hear from Brian and Rick in a few minutes here. They're going to come up and join us. 
their business is impressive. When I started looking up stats last weekend, Kim and I were having coffee, and I just started looking up new stats, like what's, you know, I, I know what these guys generate, I know what you can generate if you decide to, to build a business, not do a few deals, but to build a business with us. Listen to this, 7.9% of all businesses in the United States, 7.9% will hit a million in revenue. That's it. Yet anyone, and this is not to say it's easy, it's to say if you're committed and dedicated, anyone that decides to come in the business, and builds it, and I'm not saying for six months, guys, I'm not saying for 90 days, I'm not saying for even a year, I'm saying decides to build it three to seven years, you blow that stat out of the water. Yet, businesses don't get there, 7.9% in the US, crazy. Can I add something? Yeah, yeah. Because has anybody ever bought a franchise or looked into buying franchises? Bunch. Yeah, how many years on average does the, an average franchise take in order to become profitable? Three, six, six for most. Chris is asking you to dedicate three to five years in order to build the business, which we're going to show you there's a possibility of you hitting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in real estate investing. So I just want you to keep that in mind because Chris and I are always going to say this is not easy. It's simple. We're going to show you the skill sets, the mindset, and the system in order to reach your goals. It is simple. But it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit the easy thing. How many, raise your hand, please, if you right now receive income as W-2 employee. Okay, 75%. Let's stay on the triangle. Um, here, I, I'm going to say this all the time. It's one of our values that Zach just read you, but please don't take anything I say personally. But the fact is, if you're in your W-2, statistically, working harder and saving is not going to create the wealth that most people are going to want. Fact. Okay? And sadly, the percentage, if I took an average, and we won't do this, it could be embarrassing, took an average in this room of savings is dismally low. Dismally low. And again, I, we're here to say, let's fix that. Let's unravel that. So to get in the, to get and stay in and take advantage of the perfect storm and the, and the triangle, you got to start with being an owner. That's what this whole two or three days is about. Three, I hope, for everyone. Be an owner. Now, it's actually, it's not easy. Um, I could peel back here for three hours the, the, all the hurdles that we've gone through even in the last 10 years building this company, not to mention the crash. So I hope you hear from, the, from all of us, not just Zach and I, that absolutely is not easy. We spent, uh, raise your hand coaches, coaches, we spent yesterday all day in the room of the coaches laboring over how can we help students do more deals, right? That's all we talked about. And a couple of them said, I think it was Steve said, it's not easy. And they got to realize that. Like they really care about that, but they want you to know that's not freaking easy. It's not. But, I, but I don't know where you get the return. I sat anyway. around the table at the last, at the mess I just flew in from, from Tampa Bay uh, with some of the top mindset coaches in the country as well. And they were talking about this exact subject. Like all of us sitting around, like being vulnerable, talking about the difficulty of growing businesses. And, and doing real estate deals. And, they, and one of this gentleman's name is uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Court, um, Precourt, Patrick Precourt. Uh, and he was saying that, have you ever realized that anything we're doing is on the other side of difficult? Is anybody married? <laughs> I wasn't saying it like that. <laughs> Who, pro anybody propose? How hard of, a, of a, an event was that? But you wanted to become married to that person. It was not an easy situation to go through in order to go ahead and propose. Anything in life that is worth getting is going to be on the other side of difficulty. So if, you're, if you're not going through difficult things, then you're, you're probably not getting the things you want. Uh, I was just thinking we could do this for two hours. We're yep. going to wrap it up and bring these guys up. So um, this is what we like doing, but we're going to go ahead and progress this for you guys. Um, let's do this. Let's do two things. Let's sort of, based on some of those statistics, let's just in your own mind, face kind of where you are. Just, just do a check. Where, where are you right now? Just be, be okay with that. And not some story of it and just real raw reality where you are right now. And then figure out what you think the blocks are and seek that out on the breaks. I think Dan mentioned, like seek that out with the coaches and the associates in the room 
And I promise you the answers are, are here in the room. And then you get to create a vision, back to what Zach started with, you get to create a vision that you choose. And is that simple? What? You, you get to choose and you get to design it. 